This is a lesson on using a variable to write an equation. So um, one thing that you need to know first of all is that um, an equation has to always have an equal symbol. Right there, equal equations, those are similar words. If there is no equal sign, then it is not an equation. For example, saying 5 plus 6 is not an equation. But if I said 5 plus 6 equals 11, then that is an equation. Another thing an equation needs to be is correct. So if I said 5 plus 6 is 4, then that's not an equation because it's not correct. All right, so let's look at the explore first. Um, you're going to pause the video after I explain and see if you can figure it out. So what you need to do is match the following sentences on the left here with the corresponding equation on the right. You can just draw a line to whichever one matches. So each sentence matches with one equation. Okay, so pause the video and do that right now, and then we'll go through together in a second. Okay, so let's see if you figured this out. We've got four times the number is 20. So right here I see four times the sun is 20. Then I've got five. Oh, let me get another line here. Uh, 5 is 30 divided by a number. So I look for, I've got 5 equals 30 divided by something. And you'll notice that diamond represents some number that we don't know. Next, we've got 2 less than a number is 9. Uh, so this right here, there's a number minus 2. So 2 less than that number equals 9. So you should have got... Uh, this matching with this one and that leaves this 8 is 3 more than a number 8 equals 3 more than a number and there's the number so sometimes the they're phrased in different orders but um, they this is this is how you would read these okay so there's the explore now we go down to the connect and it says we can write an equation to help us solve a problem we can use a letter variable to represent what we do not know so up here i use just symbols so i've got a square um, some diamonds and a sun so that's representing the number that we don't know i can also use a letter and that is called a variable okay if i put a letter in place then that is a variable um, and those are helpful when we need to solve problems and we want to write an equation. Okay, so the variable we choose is often the first letter of a word in the problem. Now we'll look at that in a minute, but just keep that in mind. So if I wanted to know um, how many apples I had left after eating 10 um, and I ate 3, then maybe I would use A as, an, as a variable because that's part of the word problem. I'm looking for apples. Okay, and then um, here, here's an equation. So the equation might look like this if you're using a variable. So the variable could be all by itself um, on the other side of the equal sign. So I've got 5 plus 3 equals something. In another case, we can have the variable with one of the other numbers. So I have here um, 40 divided by b, and that equals 10. Now you won't be dividing, but you can divide like this. So just showing you that you can have the variable, the letter, um, on either side of the equation. Um, okay, so you would then find the number that could replace the variable or the letter so that the equation makes sense. So you'd have to solve it after. Okay, so over here we've got an example that says, Eddie opened a package of 20 pencils. He gave out some pencils. There were six pencils left. How many pencils did Eddie give out? So I'm going to show you three equations that you could write. Um, first of all, though, we need to assign a letter to those number of pencils that Eddie doesn't know. So that letter is a variable. And since we're using pencils, I'm going to use the letter P. Okay, so I write, let P equal the number of pencils given out. So now I know that P is what I don't know. I don't know how many he gave out, 
So that's what P represents. So you would write this when you're solving your problems. That's the first step for writing an equation. Then, um, here we've got here are three equations we can write. So number one, we know that the total number of pencils equals the number of pencils given out plus the number left. So if the total number of pencils was 20, the number of pencils given out we do not know, and the number of pencils left is 6. So our equation could be 20 equals P plus 6. So number of pencils we, know, we had in total was 20 plus given out we don't know, so we put a P. Uh, or equals, sorry, equals that, and then plus the number left, which we have 6. That would give us our number. Second way, um, we know that the number, of, the number of pencils left is equal to the total number of pencils minus the number given out. So we know what's left. We've got 6, and that equals um, 20. That's the total number of pencils given total number of pencils minus P, the number given out. So we would get 6 equals 20 minus P. And here's another one. We know that the number of pencils given out is equal to, to the total number of pencils minus the number of pencils left. So that would be P minus 20 equals 6. So you'll notice in any of these equations we only have two, two different numbers and one variable. We have 20 we have, for the uh, total number of pencils, we have 6 for the pencils left, and we have P for how many, how many he gave out. We can do any combination um, as long as it makes sense, right? So the total number of pencils equals number of pencils given out plus pencils left. Um, number of pencils left is, is equal to what he had minus what he gave out. Similarly, um, what he gave out is equal to the, how many he had minus what he has left. Okay, so don't let this confuse you and think, oh, how am I going to figure that out um, in, a, in a problem? You would just have to, to use one of these. So it's just showing you that you don't have to have the same thing as your neighbor, and it could be right, as long as your answer is the same. Okay. Oh, and this, by the way, um, if you didn't figure it out already, P would equal 14. So Eddie would have given 14 pencils out. All right, so here's your practice. So you'll pause after I read the problem to you. It says Megan had 36 emails in her inbox. This was twice as many emails as she had last week. How many emails did Megan have last week? Write an equation to represent the problem. So pause the video. Um, and, and see if you can solve. Now if you're having trouble, um, you could either add or multiply. Okay, so first step to um, writing an equation to represent the problem is letting a variable equal what we don't know. So what I don't know is how many emails Megan had last week. So that's what my variable needs to represent, is how many is uh, this number. So um, since we're looking for emails, I used the letter E for my um, variable. And I wrote my, my let sentence. So this would be one check mark, one point for my answer. Let E equal the number of emails Megan had last week. Now, if you just wrote the number of emails Megan had, then that's not specific enough because we also know how many she had this week. So you need to make sure that you wrote last week and the number of emails because those are important key points. Okay, now we need to write an equation. So there are a number of equations that you may have come up with. And um, let's look at what they could be. So Um, we've got 36 emails. We know there's 36 emails, and we know that she had, um, and this was twice as many as she had last week. So, um, we could go 36 
emails divided by 2 equals e. Or, because I said you could multiply, you could go uh, 2 times e equals 36. Now, um, you may have noticed right underneath here, I've written, no, oh, it's not on this one. Hang on. Right here, I've written a little reminder. So it says, when writing multiplication between a number and a variable, you do not need to write the time symbol. Okay, so instead of, for example, writing 5 times m, you would just write 5m. And the number would always go before the variable, before the letter. So it goes number, then letter, number, then letter. Okay, let's get back to our page. So instead of writing this, I wouldn't, I would write 2e equals 36. Okay, um, so there's 36 divided by 2 equals e, or 2 times e equals 36. We would still find our answer. And I guess um, you couldn't add because we don't, we only know that it's twice as much, so you can't really do an adding. So I was wrong there, I'm sorry. Uh, but you can divide or you can multiply in this case. And then you would solve. So um, if you know what 36 divided by 2 is, then you can know what E is. Or if you know 2 times the number equals 36, then you can know what it is. And that number is 13 emails. Okay, but really what we're looking for is just the... Um, equation. So um, when you're searching for an equation and trying to figure it out, know that it might not take you a sec, like two seconds to do it. It might take you a little bit. So reread the problem a number of times before giving up and asking. Okay, see if you can do it on your own. So let's flip to the page over here again and you'll notice that I wrote um, or I put a little graphic on here for you to remember. So when you're reading problems and you get to the part where it asks you what 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 you need to find or tells you what you need to find, then look at the keywords and um, if you're not sure what what process to do, then look at here. So for example, if your if your problem asks it you to um, check how many is left, then you're subtracting. Or if it asks you um, how many all together, then you're going to add. Okay, down here, oops. Um, if it asks uh, how many, or if it asks out of or separated or um, each, then you would divide. If you have the words um, product or area or multiply, then obviously you're going to times. Okay, so what you need to do is try the assignment um, on page 22, and you're going to do numbers one to six.